Sheila, do we have the execs on the phone for Die Hard? Fantastic, doll. Patch him through. He can carry on filing away those Me Too allegations. And by filing away, I mean throw him in the trash. <laughs> Thanks, sugar tits. Gentlemen, Jonathan Cross here. I have a great movie pitch for Die Hard 6, which we're now calling McLean, a Die Hard story. The movie's going to start out with McLean talking to a shadowy figure in a cell. We're not going to reveal who that person is until the end of the film. And he's going to kind of reflect on all the different things that happened in his life. So after about five solid minutes of Bruce Willis phoning it in again, we're going to cut to him when he's much younger. A rookie cop on the beat, on the mean streets. And I'm thinking this actor is going to look, sound, or have none of the mannerisms of Bruce Willis. Think of, actually, you know what, let's just get the guy that did Solo in the Han Solo prequel. That would, be, that would actually be perfect if we could get him. Haven't really figured out the plot yet. All I know is we're going to be trilogying the fuck out of this thing because we have a lot of time to work with. We have McLean all the way up until Nakatomi Plaza. So there's lots of stories to tell. And I did say we're going to talk about him being a rookie cop, which is ideal, but we can go back further even. We can go to high school John McLean. Maybe he meets Holly Gennaro there, their high school sweethearts. She's the cheerleader. He's the captain of the football team. Maybe Officer Powell is there. He's one of the rival football team quarterbacks. He can take him on. But really what I want to do with this is get a sense of who John McClain is growing up, how he became the man that would eventually stop the terrorist attack at Nakatomi Plaza, which we would find out isn't a terrorist attack. It's a bank robbery. It's a heist, which is just phenomenal. It's clever. It's, it's brilliant. It's nothing that we plan on using in this prequel trilogy. We're going to focus about 10 minutes on how John gets his last name, McClain. I think that's something everybody wants to know, how he gets his gun for the first time. And, and really just every sort of little minutia we can dive into, we're going to. We're going to flip over every rug. We're going to toss every curtain, see what's behind the window, peek inside, and then rape what is ever in there. We can probably find something for a young Samuel L. Jackson to do, bring him back, uh, Zeus from Die Hard with a Vengeance, toss him in the mix. The thing that's really going to get people talking, though, most of this film's going to be generic and by the numbers, but the big reveal when we pull back that final curtain is Hans Gruber coming out of the shadows to talk to McLean. He's the one that was in the prison. Think of him as like a Hannibal Lecter sort of character. And yes, I am aware that Alan Rickman is gone, RIP, but that doesn't mean we can't CGI the shit out of him. Bring him back. Uh, it doesn't even matter how he survived the fall of Nakatomi Plaza. We can throw that out in some novel or side cartoon that we are also planning on doing. Die Hard, the McLean Wars, McLean Wars, a Die Hard tale. It doesn't matter what we call it. It's going to happen either way. We can explain it there. Gruber will have CGI robot legs so that the audience does kind of get an indicator that he broke his legs in the fall and they've reconstructed them with futuristic technology because this is going to take place in the future. Uh, we're going to see Bruce Willis with a beard. He's bald. I mean, he's been bald since the first one, you know, balding, but it's just going to all come full circle, really. It's really going to be a, a touching film because we're going to be touching the audience's pocketbooks, uh, jerking them off for all their money they're worth. I'd also like to remind people about Die Hard 5 as much as possible. It's one of the swan songs of the franchise. It was meant to be a final feather in this cap, but since we're going to keep making more of these, might as well bring back his son that everybody loved from Die Hard 5. Courtney, we're bringing back Jai Courtney. He's in the mix. Suicide boomerang man himself coming in the fray, coming in the heart of it. The final line of the film is going to come from CG Alan Rickman. He's going to step forward to the bars, look at McLean and say, What is it you used to say to me, Mr. Cowboy? Oh yes, yippee ki motherfucker. And then boom, credits. And I got a lot of ideas for this. Since we are doing the McLean thing, we could do an Argyle spinoff, the limo driver from the first film. We can do a Holly Gennaro spin-off. I'd like to really uh, focus on the strong female lead portion of her story arc. In fact, we could have her in this as the love interest for the young John McClane, but then she kind of twists the knife on him. Turns out she's a double agent, and then it turns out again that she's not a double agent. She loved him the whole time. Coolio, we got a picture here? Yeah, yeah, we got a picture, baby. Sheila, are we done with those Me Too's yet? Just toss them all in the trash. I couldn't care less about anything else in my life. I'm going to hit the golf course.